You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension, a dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Uncle Simon, do you want your hot chocolate upstairs? Uncle Simon, I have your tray. Can you hear me? I said, do you want your hot chocolate upstairs? Garbage head, I'm right here. You don't have to yell. Oh, I scared the, the life out of me. Oh, did I? Where were you? In the basement, of course. Where else would I be? You told me you were going to take your afternoon nap. And I shall, after I finish my work, as usual. Well, my wilted blossom, what's on your mind? Anything? Your hot chocolate's ready. So I gather. I'll take it in the study. That's fine, Uncle. But you know, you might try extending yourself sometime just sufficiently to let me know where you are. Well, I can narrow it down for you, Barbara, my love. If I'm not upstairs in my bedroom, I'm downstairs in my laboratory. In either case, you simply bring the hot chocolate to one place or the other. Clear? Utterly. And if I'm in neither place, that means I drop dead en route. And you can just bring me a bottle of formaldehyde and a rose. You have such a sense of humor, Uncle. You should have tried stand-up comedy. No, wait. They didn't have comedy clubs in your day, did they? Burlesque, then. You could have gone into burlesque. A regular George Burns. <sighs> That's an idea. I dare say I, I should have been a bit more comfortable than you in such a setting. Do you even know how to dance, Barbara? Uncle Simon. Not necessarily as a headliner like, say, Gypsy Rose Lee. In the chorus, perhaps. That might be more your style. Ever let yourself loose? Oh, for a fast Charleston? Uncle Simon, I am very busy. No, I didn't think so. Most unlikely. You're the only woman I know who looks as if underneath her clothes she wears more clothes. You have all the grace and femininity of a high-buttoned shoe. And you, Uncle Simon. What about... Yes? Never mind. Go on, my dear. Speak it out. Let's see. If you can compensate for the fact that you're a passionless vegetable by at least speaking your mind. If I'm a passionless vegetable, it's because my gardener is an ancient relic made out of dry skin and ice water. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Not bad at all. If I prod you enough, you can scrabble up to the occasion at least part way. <laughs> what else is new with you, my angular turnip? You say you've made hot chocolate? That's a start, I suppose. To what other soul-stirring projects have you applied your talents today? I noticed you tried to open up the drapes in the bedrooms and the hall. And I noticed you closed them. What are you afraid of? Afraid, my dear? What do you think could happen to you if you ever got hit by fresh air and sunlight? Think you might shrivel up and blow away like a vampire? My, my, my. Is that your fantasy? That I'm from Transylvania? Sorry to disappoint you. No such luck, I'm afraid. What would happen if we fumigated this old house and got rid of all the medicine smells and the chemical smells? You're referring, I take it, to these test tubes. An important part of my research, as you well know. Then why keep them in the study with the Wedgwood and the Dresden China? They must be here. They indicate changes in the moisture content of the air. What changes? The only changes here is that the air turns from stale to musty to plain old mildew. 
pretty soon I won't be able to breathe it at all. Why, you poor suffocating spinster. I didn't realize how affected you were by the life of relative ease you enjoy. Entirely at my expense, I might add. You ask what I've done today? All right. Here's the answer. I cleaned up after you. First, last, and in between. I cleared away, or tried to clear, the debris you leave behind. And to understand how anybody who's earned all these diplomas and awards can be so sloppy. This one, for example. Honorary degree for sound transmission. God only knows what that one was for. And what's this contraption on your desk? A room straightener, maybe? That's one thing you should have invented. Now tell me, where does this thing belong? Leave it exactly where it was, Barbara. Oh, oh. would you have noticed the difference? Would you really? You've been told a thousand times not to disturb anything. I could have put it away when I swept the cellar, except that, as usual, your laboratory was securely bolted. Someday I'd like to see what it is you putter around with down there. I bet you would. And someday you shall. Someday you'll be the mistress of this decaying and drafty barn, and then you can do anything you please. But for the moment, you'll keep your spindle-shanked carcass out of my laboratory, and that long, thin, probing proboscis of yours away from my business. Gladly. Now get me some fresh hot chocolate. Put it in the English cup today, and if it's not hot, I'll throw it on the floor, and you'll have even more to clean up. Dramatist Personae, Mr. Simon Polk, a gentleman who has lived out his life in gleeful rage, and the young lady who just now beat a hasty retreat is Mr. Polk's niece, Barbara. She lives each hour of her life as if perpetually late for a dentist's appointment. And there is yet a third member of the company soon to be seen, he now resides downstairs in the laboratory, and he is, well, the kind of character you'd expect to find only in the Twilight Zone. And now, back to the Twilight Zone with Uncle Simon, starring Beverly Garland and Peter Mark Richman, with Stacy Keach as your narrator. I'll make you some fresh chocolate. Barbara! Uncle. Question. Yes. A point of information. Go on. Perhaps you can enlighten me. If all you've said is true, why do you stay here? I was under the impression I was needed. You are. That answer explains why I keep you here. It doesn't even remotely suggest why you stay. <sighs> you want it quite honestly, I presume. Indeed. You may be short on beauty, my dear. But a lack of candor is not one of your deficiencies. I stay. I live for the moment that I can see you buried. And on the day when I come back from your funeral, I'll open up a bottle of wine. I want to be compensated, Uncle Simon, for 25 years of being shrieked at, insulted, berated, humiliated, stepped on, ground underfoot like this old rug. Is that sufficiently honest for you? Mm-hmm. I wish you well, good and faithful Barbara. And I won't even come back to haunt you by word on that. But unasked, I offer the following observation free of charge. Oh. I can hardly wait. If you had an ounce of gristle or an inch of intestine, you would have murdered me years ago. So as to your 25 years of abject misery and unspeakable indignation, life has a way of dishing out justice. In other words, you deserve it, kid. Now play your role and get me my hot chocolate before I think of something more complicated for you to do. <laughs> uh. 
Dear Uncle Simon. And where are you now, you old... Ah, of course. Downstairs in your laboratory, as you call it. Where else? And what do you do in there, dear uncle? I mean, if I could see for myself just a glimpse, just once, so I'll know... you leave the door unlocked this time? Well, now, what have we here? Uh, I was, I, I was, I was looking for... Looking for what? I, I thought perhaps you, you'd show me what you're building. <laughs> Indeed. You'd love to know that, wouldn't you? Well, I'm sure it's, it's something impressive. My curiosity got the better of me. That's the one character trait you share with normal women. Curiosity. An ineffable and insatiable curiosity. Well, remember what it did for the proverbial cat. One of these days, you're going to find out what I'm building. I'm sure I will, Uncle. Whenever you're ready. But for the time being, you night-crawling imitation of the female gender... If I catch you sneaking around outside my door again, I'll break your head with a broom handle. Or one of these canes. Now go back upstairs and engage yourself in a nerve-wracking game of dominoes. With pleasure. Now, go on! Tell me, Uncle Simon. What? Tell me why it is that beasts like you stay alive for so long. How's that again? You heard me. Why do some men have the decency to die when their time is up, while brute animals like yourself continue on and on? <laughs> indeed, why indeed. That bit of curiosity I shall be glad to satisfy. In most cases, particularly mine, we have something to live for, an overarching purpose that keeps us going. Oh, and what would that be? I have you to live for, you crooked-seamed grubber. I keep this decrepit heart beating and these over-the-hill lungs breathing because I know how deeply dedicated you are to the one sight that will be your ultimate reward. And what sight is that? Seeing me die. Who came here 25 years ago when you were crippled and sick and couldn't take care of yourself? Who moved in and nursed you and kept you alive? You did! That's right! Me! And no one else! You, you scrounging female ape. Now let's get down to cases. The question is, why did you? Why would you? Out of familial love, was it, Barbara? Out of a palpitating compassion? Out of a flagpole stiff loyalty? tell you why you came, why you nursed, and why you stayed, you covetous crank. Go ahead, enlighten me. There's no mystery. No mystery at all. You came because you knew that when I depart, I'll leave everything behind to you. By default, my only living relative. Everything. You stayed on day after day and year after year because every prayer that came out of your tight little mouth was a supplication that I'd be dead the next morning. A brilliant deduction. So don't go mouthing sweetness at me, you thin-lipped, toothpick-legged conover. I wouldn't think of it. Anything you did for me, you did out of greed, naked and unadorned. Don't tell me different. Stay away from me. Greed, Miss Barbara, greed. So big, so thick, so heavy, it blotted out even that delicious hate you've been carrying around inside. I said stay back. Well, let me tell you something, you money-sick crone. You'll get paid off in due time. Before that, you'll pay through every one of your pores for what I leave you. Don't you raise your cane to me. You'll pay, you ugly harpy. As God is my witness, How you'll... dare you! What are you, what are you doing? Give me that cane! Barbara! No! Barbara! <laughs> Uncle? Barbara! What? Barbara, help me! What, Uncle? Barbara, Barbara, please! I didn't quite hear you. 
I think... Speak a little louder, would you, Uncle? Tell me, what is it you wanted? I think my back is broken. What's that? You want some hot chocolate? Would you like it in the Dresden cup? Or the Wedgwood? What is your pleasure this evening, Uncle? Barbara! You say you want me to close the drapes and shut the windows? Barbara. Barbara? You want Barbara? She's right here, love. She's standing right above you. Can't you see her? Please. Can't you hear her? You ancient albatross with the dirty, dirty mouth. Oh, but you're so pale. Let me pinch some color back into your cheeks. No. There now. That's better. How does that feel? Uncle Simon. Oh, Uncle Simon, don't die quite yet. If you can hold out, try. Try just for a second. I want to tell you something. I want to make an announcement. As of this second, I have quit suffering for you. I'm no longer sewing, Uncle Simon. As of right now, I'm going to reap! <laughs> Are you comfortable, Mr. Schwimmer? Uh, what? Oh, yes. Thank you, Miss Polk. I'll just be another moment. I, uh, I cleaned off my uncle's desk for you. Yes, yes. You've kept the house in splendid condition, by the way. It looks different somehow. Oh, I, I've made a few changes. Marvelous taste you have, I must say. If you need pencils or pens, they're in the top drawer. No, no, the will is relatively simple. I only want to make sure I brought the latest amendments, signed and notarized. But I thought he drew it up years ago. It's been in the safe deposit box for as long as I can remember. The original copy, yes. Your uncle had me drafted shortly after you came to stay with him. He added a codicil or two later on, hence this revised copy. Oh, really? I wasn't aware of that. Assets, real property. Uh -huh. Everything seems to be in order. Oh, there's, there's no need to read it aloud, Mr. Schwimmer. If you can just give me the sense of it so I'll know how to dispose of his things. That, my dear, won't be necessary. I beg your pardon? That is the sense of it. What do you mean? The will very explicitly requires that you throw away nothing, that you keep everything as it was, intact. I see. The house... The furnishings, everything, it all goes to you in perpetuity. With the proviso, of course, that you remain here in perpetuity, as it were. Do you have any objection to that? Why, I have no other place to go, Mr. Schwimmer. This has become my home. <clears throat> of, of course, of course. So, the document is quite clear in its intent. Everything will remain in your name as long as you are on the premises. The same thing applies to the various securities in the cash account, which is quite sizable. It has been set up as a trust in your name. You're to draw all the interest accruing so long as you remain in the house. Where could anyone... Where could anyone ever find a man with a heart as big as his? Uh, quite so. Is there more? Hmm... Well, the sense of this, Miss Polk, is that to qualify for your inheritance, there is one additional stipulation. What kind of stipulation? That you're to care for your uncle's latest experiment. Hmm. Care for? That's odd. I don't understand it, Mr. Schwimmer. Which experiment? I have no idea. But it reads as follows. 
My beloved niece, Barbara, will be responsible for the well-being of my latest experiment. She will care for it, look after it, and see to its wants and needs. What wants and needs? A member of the law firm of Schwimmer, Schwimmer, King, Bartlett, Kaplan, and Schwimmer will visit the domicile once each week to see that this stipulation is adhered to. In the event my beloved niece Barbara fails to comply with the provisions herein, I hereby give and bequeath all my property, both real and personal, to the state university. Uh Uh-huh. Now, the sense of that, Miss Polk... Tell me, Mr. Schwimmer, what is the sense of that? I gather it depends very much on the nature of your uncle's experiment, which he refers to only as it. I take it you have no idea what it might be? None at all, except that whatever it is, it's in the basement. Where are you going? What do you think? To the laboratory. Oh, wait, you'll need the keys. He always kept it locked. Your uncle was a genius. I'm sure he didn't want his work to fall into the wrong hands. Not even mine. A matter of national security, perhaps. (sighs) At last. His inner sanctum. Not particularly foreboding. I must say, it looks like any research lab at the university. With a few pieces of gear I haven't seen before. He was always ordering new parts, all the latest test equipment. And you don't know what he was testing? He chose not to share that bit of information with me. To protect you, I'm sure. But we'll know soon enough. What's behind that other door? Where? Against the wall, at the back of the room. I don't know. Do you have the other key? It must be the large one. How this relates to his will, though, I'm not at all sure. Ah, now, this piece, this is interesting. Looks like a metal glove. I wonder what it does. I wouldn't touch it if I were you. Why, it's part of a mechanical hand with an arm attached. I said don't touch it. Sorry. Good good Lord. There's something attached to the arm. It appears to be a complete metal figure of some sort in the shape of a man. It must be eight feet tall. I think we better go now. How do you do? What? What are you? In your lexicon, I am a robot. I was created by the great scientist Simon Polk. You have activated my selecting and operating relays. You stay away from me. I mean you no harm. Please be patient with me. My program requires several days to function at maximum capacity. I bid you greetings. Hello, Barbara. Barbara. Now what? Barbara. Is that you, Barbara? Yes, it's me. Who else would it be? Are you going out, Barbara? It happens that I am. Why are you sitting here in the study with all the lights off? I do not like the light. This is a more restful mode while I program my circuits. Where are you going? To a concert. A concert? Do you know how long it's been since I went to a concert? No, I do not have that information. But I estimate the answer to be several years. Several? Try twenty. What is a concert? It's a... a beautiful musical experience. Inspiring. But you wouldn't know anything about that. What is music? It's when people, real human beings, use instruments handmade out of metal or wood to create sounds that are pleasing to the ear. The human ear. They should use only metal parts. Wood decays. 
It does not have the durability of metal alloy. It is an inferior building material. Well, here's a flash for you, young Frankenstein. They use horsehair, too. Dead organic material for the string section. And you know something? It sounds absolutely heavenly. Not like some tin can that got left out in the rain. I see. Do you? I doubt it. I'm going now. If you need anything, like a shot of oil on the rocks, you can get it yourself. You mustn't leave. Are you telling me what to do? Mr. Schwimmer is coming tonight. A week has gone by. Isn't that correct? Yes, Mr. Schwimmer is coming. He'll be here at 8 o'clock after I'm gone. So you just sit tight. Good. Good? Good for what? He will check my condition. He will see that I am functioning properly. That's right. Maybe he'll give you a lube and an oil change while he's at it. You see, Barbara, I am like... like an infant... I mature gradually. Soon I will have all my faculties. I will be able to perform all my faculties and functions. I will be a whole being. Oh, how nice. How perfectly grand for you. You'll be a whole being. And then what? Or can you think that far? I will take on human attributes, those that your Uncle Simon saw fit to give me. Oh, that'll be an improvement, because he certainly didn't see fit to give you any human attributes so far. You look like something out of an old science fiction movie, or the uh, Tin Man in The Wizard of Oz. (laughs) You're a joke. Joke? Ah, I understand your meaning. Simon Polk was known for his sense of humor. He could have been a comedian. Uncle Simon? Oh, oh yeah. Hysterical. The crown prince of comedy. Bye now, Tin Man. Wait. This is interesting. This is very interesting. It is coming through now. What is? A craving. A new craving. A craving? As in hunger for a machine that doesn't eat? Hot, hot chocolate. A beverage made from dried cocoa beans and sugar. I would love a cup of hot chocolate. How do you do, Miss Polk? I hope I'm not late. Late? My, you look outstanding in that dress. And those earrings. I've never seen you looking quite so... so outstanding. Were you going somewhere? No. I wasn't going anywhere. Not anywhere at all. And how, may I ask, is our young Master Polk doing this evening? Right this way. We've been waiting for you in the study. Frankenstein? Where are you? (laughs) Didn't even drink your chocolate, did you? No, of course not. And you spilled it, just so I'd have something to clean up. What are you doing down there? Hello, Barbara. I was looking through my laboratory. Your laboratory? That is correct. You better be careful, Frankenstein, or I'll leave you outside to rust. Now go upstairs and sit in your chair and be quiet. As soon as I lock the door... Wait a minute. Those keys? You took them off the desk. 
Give them back to me. Oh no. Oh no, Barbara. I must keep the laboratory locked. And you mustn't come down. It's my room. It belongs to me. Won't you bring me some more hot chocolate? So that's how it is now. <sighs> All right. All right. If that's what it takes. Barbara. What did you say? Barbara. After you bring me my hot chocolate, would you please close all the windows and pull the drapes? I don't like the light. I don't like the draft. The air inside has been carefully monitored for proper moisture content to prevent corrosion. That voice is not possible. What is the matter, Barbara? Tell me, please. What is the matter? What is the matter? What is the matter, you peanut-headed sample of nature's carelessness? You! Get away from me! Barbara! Barbara, Barbara, my legs, they're, they're bent. I can't get up. Barbara, help me. There you are. I was wondering where you'd gone to. I brought you some tea. Oh, thank you. That's lovely. But I'm afraid I can't stay. No? Another engagement, alas. Tell me, how are you, Miss Polk? I mean, really. Fine. Thank you, Mr. Schwimmer. Glad to hear it. He... It is rather quiet these days. Doesn't seem to say much, even after all these weeks. He makes his wants known. Pity about his... his legs... But he manages to get around, doesn't he? Indeed he does. Indeed he does. Well, I'll see you next week then. Yes, of course. And the week after. And the week after that. Take care of yourself, my dear. No need to show me out. Barbara! Here! In the study. Barbara, my dear. If you can prevail upon that raggedy and carcass of yours to exert yourself, I'd like a cup of hot chocolate. I would like it in a Wedgwood cup. And if it's not sufficiently hot, I'll pour it on the floor at your feet. Clear? All right. I'll make some. Speak up, you lint-headed clod. I didn't hear you. I'll make some hot chocolate. Do that, you torpid lotus eater. And be sure that it's hot. Did you hear me? Make sure it's hot. What does it take to make you move, you arthritic crab? I'll... I'll fix it for you now. You'll fix it for me now what? I'll fix it for you now, Uncle. That's better. I'll be at my desk, working on my notes. Yes, Uncle. Dramatis Personae, a metal man who will henceforth go by the name of Simon, whose life, as well as his body, have been stamped out for him by his maker and the woman who tends to his needs, the Lady Barbara, who has discovered, somewhat belatedly, that not all bad things come to an end and that once a bed is made, it may be necessary to sleep in it after all. This, our uncomfortable little exercise in avarice and automatons from the Twilight Zone.
Hi, this is Carl Amari, producer of the Twilight Zone radio dramas. I'd like to take a moment to tell you about our official website at twilightzoneradio.com where you'll get the latest news and information on these Twilight Zone radio dramas. Plus, at twilightzoneradio.com, you can digitally download three free episodes or any of our episodes for only $1.95 each. In this age of ever-changing technology, we've decided to make these episodes instantly available to you by making the Twilight Zone radio dramas a digital download-only series. This means that this series will no longer be offered on CD. The CD collections at our website are now being offered, while supplies last, at buy one, get one free. So be sure to get your favorites before they're sold out. Be sure to visit us often, and I'll see you in the zone. Uncle Simon, starring Beverly Garland and Peter Mark Richmond with Stacey Keach as your narrator was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Rod Serling. Heard in the cast were Turk Muller, Doug James, and Daniel Bryant. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Roger Wolski for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. What's in the Box, starring Mike Starr with Stacey Keach as your narrator, was adapted for radio by Dennis Etchison and based on a script by Martin Goldsmith. Heard in the cast were Meg Thalken, Jeff Lupiton, Christian Stolte, Franette Lebo, Doug James, Carl Amari, Paul Patch, and Roger Wolski. To learn more about the Twilight Zone radio dramas and to obtain audio cassettes and CDs of these programs, visit our website at twilightzoneradio.com. The producers of The Twilight Zone wish to thank CBS Enterprises, Carol Serling, Dennis Etchison, Dick Brescia Associates, Claire Simon Casting, Terry Jennings, XM Satellite Radio, Sirius Satellite Radio, our sponsors and our radio affiliates for helping make this series possible. This copyrighted radio series is produced and directed by Carl Amari and Jason Mallow for Falcon Picture Group. Doug James speaking. You unlock this door with the key of imagination. Beyond it is another dimension. A dimension of sound, a dimension of sight, a dimension of mind. You're moving into a land of both shadow and substance, of things and ideas. You've just crossed over into the Twilight Zone. Well, I don't see anyone else here. Spread them so I can read you your rights. Set it and forget it. Three easy payments. Coffee beans that are aged. Will you stop it? Turn that thing off. We'll have to operate on his brain at once. Scalpel. Watch it, nurse. It's the bottom of the eighth inning, and so far it's been a very tight game. Drop it. Drop it or I'll shoot. Take it easy, Phyllis. The repairman's coming. You did call him, didn't you? Of course I did. Now turn it down. I'm trying to cook dinner in here. I gotta keep it warmed up, don't I? Bring me another beer. Get it yourself and wash your hands. It's almost ready. Yeah, yeah. Acme TV repair. Come on in. So what seems to be the problem? Did you hear me, Joe? Dinner is served. In a minute. 
Channel change is messed up. You don't say. Keep flipping all over the place, one thing after another. Well, let me take a look. Yeah, you do that. Shall I repair it here, or perhaps take it to the shop? Are you kidding? Tonight's a big match from the garden. World Hardcore Tag Championship. You know, Mr. Britt, it may take some time. Just fix it, will ya? I gotta watch my programs. Okay, Joe, have it your way. If it's cold, it's not my fault. I'm coming. Go ahead, pal. I'll check back with you. Most certainly. Mind if I turn the sound up? A uh, man's gotta do what a man's gotta do. Just keep it down to a roar, huh? The wife. You know how it is. Yes, I do. Your wife. Your wife, that's all I hear. Easy. I said I'm taking care of it. Huh? Why don't you just tell her about us? Don't worry, I'll tell her everything. When the time's right. If you were any kind of a man, you'd do something now. You'd get rid of her. Wait a minute. What kind of program is that? Oh, that's Channel 10. But I don't get Channel 10. There's no such thing. Portrait of a TV fan. Name, Joe Britt. Occupation, cab driver. Married to one Phyllis Britt, long-suffering companion in a lower middle-class apartment. His one consolation is the time he spends in front of his television set, watching various sports, crime, courtroom, and medical shows, his nightly escape into a world of fantasy and high drama. But tonight, Mr. Britt is going to watch something not listed in his local newspaper, a special broadcast designed for the cabbie who's seen everything. Joe Britt doesn't know it yet, but his flag is down, his meter's running, and he's already in high gear on his way to a call that will lead him off the pages of the map book and into the Twilight Zone. And now, The Twilight Zone and our story, What's in the Box? Starring Mike Starr with Stacy Keach as your narrator. Great dinner. Glad you liked it. Scrumptious. Wasn't it? Absolutely mouth-watering. I thought so, too. Tastes like, like... Yeah, go ahead and say it. Like what, Joe? I got it. Fiberglass. Well, keep on being late. What do you expect? Not much from you. Yeah, the feeling's mutual. I'm telling you, I'm getting sick of it. Where'd you get this slop? The Lucky Dog Pet Store? You're getting sick of it. How do you think I feel? I don't get a man coming home to me at night. I get something left in the cab that's all used up. Nice, Phyllis. Real nice. Tell the whole world. We got company, remember? Oh, yeah. The TV repair man? Better hope he gets finished pretty soon, Joe, so you can watch your programs instead of having a conversation with your wife. We're having a conversation right now. Sure we are. It ain't my fault I'm pulling long hours. Yeah? Whose fault is it? The man in the moon? I already told you. Guy hails me when I'm heading into the garage. Had to haul him all the way up to Yonkers. Oh, give it a rest, Joe. I heard that one before. The other day it was Yonkers. Yesterday it was LaGuardia. You don't fool me one bit. Just tell me. Who's the girl? What girl? The one you've got on the side. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, and you're a louse. You don't have nothing left by the time you get home. You gotta be giving it away someplace else. Yeah, I got so much extra energy. Where would I get it? Not from this food. You get what you pay for, Joe. And you're slipping way behind in your payments. Give me a break. I'll give you a break in your head is what I'll give you. If you're cheating on me, Joe, I swear. Can it, Phyllis? The guy out there's getting a free show. Free? How much are you paying him? Ten bucks an hour? Twenty? And for what? So you can watch your stupid TV. I got a suggestion, Joe. Why don't you sleep on the couch tonight so you don't miss the late, late show? That's it. I'm going in the other room. Well, don't let me stop you. Take the whole six-pack. As soon as he gets done, you better hurry up. It's getting late. The main event's coming up. Goat Boy and Old Crow versus Dude Love and Rob Van Don. I know what's going on. You think I don't? You can't even look me in the eye anymore. You're so guilty. Phyllis, for the love of... Well, don't jump off any building on my account, Joe. One of these days, I'm going to even up the score. Make it a real tight ball game. What's that supposed to mean? Freddy Broom. You know that good-looking butcher? He's always given me the once-over. I can feel his eyeballs rolling over me like ball barons. You'd think I was the Queen of Sheba. What are you trying to do? Start a fight? Well, I got no fight left in me. Once that Joker gets fiddling with the TV, all I want to do is watch wrestling and flake out. I'm pooped. Yeah, I'll bet you are. You drove to Yonkers. For all I know, you even went twice. 
You shouldn't drive so much, Joe. You'll ruin your health. How's it coming, Mac? Well, Mr. Britt, you've got yourself a little problem here. A little problem? You've been at it an hour now. I could have built a whole new set by now. Is that so? Sure thing. I didn't just step off the ferry from Jersey. I know how you guys operate. Do you? First you kill a 20 buck hour. Then you say you gotta take it down to the shop. Another 20. Then you start switching tubes and charging me for the privilege. I get some poor sucker's old parts, and he gets mine. Nobody's the wiser, right? If you say so. And what was that phony station you brought in? Channel 10, my aching back. I don't know what you're referring to. You know, huh? Probably put a videotape in just to confuse me. It's a racket, that's what it is. A penny ante Cosa Nostra. Well, the state of New York's got laws against that. So save yourself a headache. I ain't swinging for no big bills, period. In that case, the set's ready. What? You heard me. The set's ready. No charge for my services. Want a beer? On me. No, thanks. Have a pleasant evening. Same to you, pal. Same to you. Now, where's the remote? Hey, Phyllis! Come on in! We can get channel 10! Your wife. Your wife. That's all I hear. In a minute, Joe. Hold your horses, baby. What? That guy looks just like... Why don't you do something about her? I trusted you. I didn't hold anything back. I waited and waited. Wait a minute. You drove me all the way out to the park in your taxi, and now you won't even speak to me. What's the matter? I'm talking to you. What's the matter, Joe? How did they know? There wasn't no camera around. What do you want from me? Marry me. Marry you? What are you, crazy? If you don't, I'll tell her everything. Like what? I'm a bigamist? Look, baby, we're talking about two different things. Love is flowers and wine with dinner. Marriage is a floor mop and two pounds of hamburger. I'm serious, Joe. So, how's the picture? The picture? Look at you, you slob. You spilled your beer. It'll dry out. It's a good thing your mother gave us this rug. Oh, I hate it anyway. Even beer stains is an improvement. Take it easy. You say we can see Channel 10, so where is it? I turned it off. Well, turn it on again. Maybe later. Later, I've got the stove to clean. Turn it off, Phyllis. Quit clowning. Give me that thing. What are you, nuts or something? Never mind. You yell to come in and look at Channel 10, and then when I drop everything... What's the matter? Is the set still on the blink? Yeah, I mean, no. Well, there must be something screwy. You know there's no Channel 10 around here. Did you try the other channels? Let me see that remote again. Get your hands off that! Listen, Phyllis. Do you by any chance trying to pull a fast one? I don't know what you mean. That guy. Who was he? What guy? Don't give me that. The guy, the guy, the repair guy. Oh, him? <laughs> How do I know? I never saw him before. No? You're the one who called him. I told you to call a repairman. I didn't say which one. You picked him out. Oh, you're suspicious. <laughs> well, Casanova, you can relax. When I even up the score, it'll be with that butcher, Freddie Broom. He's got the most expressive hands. Oh, I've watched him cut meat. You should see what he can do to tenderize it. He sends me right to Yonkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure, that must be it. He did something to the TV. They can do all kinds of cockamamie things with electronics. You're acting like a lunatic. Okay, who was he? Before I crack you one in the mouth. Like I told you, I don't know. The regular repair guy, he's on vacation. So you were yelling to get the set fixed tonight so you can see every drop of blood on Goat Boy's forehead. Excuse me, I mean forehead. All right, knock it off. You don't have to read my horoscope. Where did you get this, Fink? <clears throat> Let go of me. From the phone book. Where else? What's wrong, Joe? He didn't fix it, right? No, he fixed it. He fixed it perfect. You should have seen this as uh, Channel 10. Nah, never mind. I'd like to. Turn it on. No, no, no. It's, it's not the honest. I, go finish your cleaning up. I'm sorry I yelled at you. See, I guess the traffic got to me. Yeah, that's it. It's... Well, something sure did. You keep this up, Joe. You better see a psychiatrist. Take my word for it. <sighs> I guess I'll stick to wrestling. Something civilized. They're circling each other, looking for an opening. 
With the tag team gold on the line, this is going to be a real slobber knocker. Huh. This is more like it. Now the collar and elbow hookup into a quick go behind. Whoa, Nelly! Dude loves going for this patented sleeper hold. Oh, but wait a minute. Go boy fouls him with a billy goat kick. Whoa, where's the referee? Oh, that one must have hurt. Now, oh, now he, you're not going to believe this, folks. He's trying to chew Dude Love's ear off. Come on, Rav. This is a Pier 6 brawl. Now all four men are outside the ring on that hard concrete floor. Break it up! Oh, somebody's got to stop these bohemoths before... Great dinner. Glad you liked it. Huh? Scrumptious. Wasn't it? Absolutely mouth-watering. I thought so, too. What is that? It's like... like... Yeah, go ahead and say it. Like what, Joe? I got it. Fiberglass. No, well, you... keep on being late. What do you expect? Not much from you. Yeah, the feeling's mutual. I'm telling you, I'm getting sick of it. Where'd you get this slop? The Lucky Dog Pet Store? You I'm sick of it. How do you think I feel? I don't get a man coming home to me at night. I get something left in the cab that's all used up. Nice, Phyllis. Real nice. Tell the whole world. I don't believe it. If she sees this... Hey. Oh. Wait, I can't breathe. Ow! Ow! Joe, I'm all finished. Let's watch something together for once. Even you're wrestling, for a while at least. Joe? Joe! Talk to me, Joe! Wake up, are you all right? What, what, what happened? I don't know. Here, get up on the couch. Uh, I must have fainted or something. Are you okay? Yeah, 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 sure. What happened? Maybe something I ate. Yeah, that's it. It tasted, uh, it tasted kind of funny. Well, why wouldn't it? I had to heat it up three times. Twice would have been enough. Now listen to me, Joe. Huh? It may be your heart. Oh, come on. I'm serious. All that overtime, it's not good for you. You ain't kidding. You'd better go to bed while I call the doctor. No, no, no. There's nothing wrong with me. Sure, Joe. You just keeled over for no reason. It's the television. What? There's something screwy with the TV. Are we on that again? Phyllis, I got something to ask you. I'm listening. Here, put your feet up. You want some hot chocolate? This is important. Are you sure you never saw that repair guy before? I'm going to call the doctor. Come here. Sit down. I told you I got something important to talk about. All right. What is it? Phyllis, what would you say if I told you that I saw myself? Oh, Joe, please. I'm serious. Wearing my regular clothes, just like I look right now. I'd say you looked in the mirror. I do that all the time, and I don't like what I see either, but it's nothing to faint about. Like Frank Sinatra said, that's life. Nobody's getting any younger. But what are we going to do about it? The moving finger writes and having written a... I said listen! I'm talking here! Phyllis! I saw myself on TV. Really? Was it that candid camera? I hope you were smiling. You always had a real nice smile. No, it wasn't the candid camera. What would you say if I told you I saw you on TV, too? When? Just now. I'd say you're cracked, Joe. I haven't been out of the apartment all day. Then somebody's spying on us. If you really think that, you must be losing your marbles. Why would anyone want to spy on us? It's not like we ever do anything anymore. Nothing to write home about. Enough! Okay, forget it. Either you really are a bird brain or you're in on it. Ain't there something you want to tell me, Phyllis? Look me in the eye. I'm giving you a chance to come clean. Joey, you know better than that. Never mind that Joey stuff. I'm on to you. You're trying to trap me. You set me up, didn't you? Joe, you're scaring me. Well, you'll have to get up mighty early in the morning to get the drop on Joe Britt. You must be sick. You're not yourself. Now, you listen to me. You go into the kitchen and you look up that repair guy in the phone book. Tell him to get back here on the double. Understand? Sure, Joe, sure. Take it easy. You'll get your blood pressure in an uproar. Because if he don't, I swear I'll go down to his shop, wherever it is, and drag him here. 
Who do you two think you're dealing with? I ain't nobody, sucker. Oh, okay, okay, I'll call him. See, I'm going. In the meantime, why don't you go to bed? Calm down, take a load off. Now, fellas! Hello? This is Mrs. Britt. Yes, I think you'd better get over here right away. Calm down, she says. Come here. What do you see now, huh, Joe? What do you see? I'm on to you. You're nuts. We'll see about that. Ha! Missed me. I'll kill you. What's that? Say it again, Joe, so the neighbors will hear. I have witnesses. I said I'll kill you. Oh, no, you don't. Not my mother's face. Stand right there. Put it down, Joe. It's an antique. Yeah? An antique, huh? What's it gonna be worth in a minute? You lousy, no good. Come to Papa. Get away from me! I got you cornered. No place to go now. I don't like that look in your eye. Unless it's out that window. Joe, put it down. Not the vase. Don't you try to run or I'll smash it, I swear. No! Get away from the window. Let go of me! No! Phyllis! Phyllis, honey! Oh. Oh. Phyllis. Phyllis? Yeah? What's the matter now, Joe? Joe? What's the matter? Can't you hear? Can't you see? Look! Look at what? The TV! What about it? On the screen! There's nothing on the screen. See for yourself. But I saw it, I tell you. You and me right here in this room. What are you talking about? Channel 10 again? I told you, Joe. We don't get Channel 10. It's a trick. It's gotta be. Somebody's playing a trick on me. Why? 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 Dr. Saltman, how is he? I've given him a sedative. I'll also leave you a prescription for some tranquilizers. Is that all he needs? We'll just have to wait and see. Of course, it might be wise to seek more expert advice. I'm a family doctor. Psychiatry's not my specialty. However, his condition could turn out to be relatively simple. What condition is that, doctor? I read an interesting study the other day. It might apply here. According to this study, it's possible for someone to suffer delusions, even actual hallucinations, because of what's called media overload, effects that are directly attributable to the electronic culture we live in. Why don't you give it to me in plain English? I can take it. Well, for example, television. You told me your husband's an addict. Perhaps he's been staring at this mixed blessing, so to speak, for such a long time that its reality has become his. You mean he's turning into a TV set? No, no, nothing like that. But he may have reached a stage of confusion where he no longer knows whether he's watching the action or participating in it. You're putting me on. He's living a kind of waking dream, in other words. Mind you, that sort of thing isn't limited to the mentally ill. It can come in flashes for anyone who's exposed to large enough doses. I have, on occasion, found myself actually calling for sutures or sponges while watching an operation on television. <gasps> Even a man like you. Never mind. Is that what's wrong with my Joey? He thinks he's one of those doctors on TV? <clears throat> In your husband's case, I gather he believes that he has, in some sense, already murdered you. What? Or rather, that he will. He no longer seems capable of differentiating between past, present, and future, between reality and fantasy. Yeah, like with his wrestling. Hmm. In any event, we don't want this situation to develop further. <gasps> I should say not. I'd like you to bring him to my office first thing in the morning. I'll order a thorough checkup, reflexes, blood work, and so forth. Sure, if you say so. Meanwhile, see that he gets some rest. I will. Thank you, doctor, from the bottom of my heart. Glad to be of help. I'll let myself out. Oh, Dr. Saltman. Yes? Is this your little black bag, or am I just imagining it? <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Thank you. Perhaps... He shouldn't watch any more television for a while. Oh, good idea. Think of it this way, Mrs. Britt. If you gaze into the abyss long enough, the abyss may begin to gaze into you. 
Isn't that the truth? Good night, and sleep well. Can you beat that? I wonder if I stare into the frigid air long enough, I'll turn into cold cuts. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something, though? We'll get back to our movie in a minute. Vince Worthingless here. You say you want dependable transportation? You need a second car so the little woman can get out of town on the weekend? Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> well, tell you what I'm gonna do. We'll get back to the news in a minute. You see this little baby right here? I'm gonna give it to you for nothing down. That's right, nothing, zero, not a penny. Walk in and drive it off with just your good name, the smile on your face, and the number where your little wife can be reached while she's out of town. Come in your birthday suit. What do I care? How's that for a bargain? Oh, what's the use? That guy's on every channel. I might as well turn in. Phyllis? Hold your horses, Joe. Phyllis! I said keep your pants on. I'm just turning out the lights. Phyllis, where are you? Phyllis, where are you? Help! Hold on, Joe! I'm coming! I'm coming! What was that noise? I heard a crash. Demira. Uh, what did you do? Demira on the dresser. I looked in it. And I saw... Uh, I saw this room. And in this room, I saw you, Phyllis. You were arguing with someone. And I didn't want to see that. So I threw the water glass and broke it. I'll clean it up. Now lie back down. The doctor wants you to sleep. I can't sleep. You wouldn't be able to either if you'd seen what I saw. So, okay, stay awake. Only let's make a deal. What you saw, I don't want to hear about it. He told you? Yes, and what you saw on the TV before. But he said not to worry, just go to sleep and tomorrow you'll be fine. Can I fix you something? It's okay. Phyllis. Yes? Phyllis, lean closer. I have to talk to you. Oh, no, you don't. What's the matter? Every time you start off like that, we wind up in a fight. And tonight, if you don't mind, I'm passing. Don't you worry about it. I got nothing to fight with you about. Well, that's a relief. If anyone's to blame for us not getting along, it's me. Well, what do you know? The doctor shot some sense into you. Do you think so? Now, go to sleep. You're not well, Joe. You can't be. If you were right in the noodle, you'd never be talking like this in the first place. Oh, no, I mean it. I really mean it. Oh, Joe. You know, Phyllis, driving a cab is pretty lonely work. You're all by yourself for hours and hours. And in between times, people are yelling at you to slow down, hurry up, Take Madison Avenue, don't take Madison Avenue, turn right, left, stop, go. And on top of all of that, they think I'm cheating them. Would you believe it? No, they don't. Who says that? So when someone finally comes along and smiles at you, calls you Mr., well, maybe you go all to pieces and think the moon and the stars are your own private property. At least for the night. It feels like spring. And you act like a first-class donkey, kicking up your heels like you were 17 or 18. See what I'm saying? No. There ain't no point in drawing you a picture. I guess you get the message. Maybe you better spell it out for me. Well, seeing you dead like that, after you fell out the window. Or at least, I thought you fell out the window, because it was on the TV and all. It was an awful shock. And I realized, well, you know what I'm trying to say. Then say it. Okay, I'll give it a try. It took a shock like that to make me realize it's you, and not some, well, some... Sounds like you're trying to confess something. I just mean, it's you I love. You're the one. I'm touched. Okay, I'm just trying to be honest. I'm really touched. How's that, better? You don't have to get nasty. Me? Nasty? What am I supposed to get, dewy and gooey? Please, Phyllis. Am I supposed to fall all over myself when my husband of 27 years tells me he's finally decided he loves me? You don't know what love is. That's not the point I was making. What is the point, then? After charming the pants off the entire borough of Manhattan, he pins the blue ribbon on me? Which means I win one used-up nitwit. Easy credit, no money down. All mine to keep and feed and pamper and obey till death do us part. The only point you've got is the one on top of your head. Take it easy, Phyllis. I'll take it easy, all right. 
I'd take a butcher knife to you right now if you weren't so pathetic, lying there in bed out of your ever-loving mind. Who's out of his mind? You are if you think I'm gonna take your crap lying down. Well, at least you'd take something lying down. Yonkers, huh? Tell me another one. No wonder you're so short on the money every week. You've been blowing it on some cheap floozy. Cheap? Not everybody's cheap. Some people are expensive. You admit it. I didn't admit nothing. That's where our money's been going. You, you... You get out of here before I... You bet I will. This is one time I'll be glad to obey. To think of the years I gave you. Well, never mind that now. What are you doing? What does it look like? I'm packing my bags and moving on. You can't do that. Oh, you just watch me, Buster. I'm gonna drag you into court, Mr. Britt. You and your fancy woman, whoever she is. This is the thanks I get for trying to turn over a new leaf. So long, Joe. Thanks for the memories. I don't know what I ever saw in her. Will somebody please tell me? That woman wouldn't know sympathy if it jumped up and bit her on the behind. Get out of here before I throw you out! Order in the court. Phyllis? Your Honor, the prosecution objects to these interruptions by the defense. What's going on in there? Hey, we have a sidebar, Your Honor. For what purpose? Who's in my living room? Approach the bench, but I warn you both. If this is a delaying tactic... Ugh. Oh, that TV again. I should have known. Your Honor, the defense is merely trying to establish the sequence of events. Or, should I say, to respond to the fantasy presented by the prosecution. Throw me out. I'd like to see him try. Now what are you doing? I'm taking my crystal glasses. They were a wedding gift, remember? But why? You don't have to do that. Why, he says. Stay away from me, Joe. I'm warning you. The mood I'm in right now, you're lucky I don't tear you limb from limb, you dirty, rotten cheat. Order. This court will stand in recess. What did you have to turn the TV on for? On? It's been off for 15 minutes. Look for yourself. Channel 10. What do you want to do? Drive me nuts? That'd be a short trip. We don't get Channel 10. Get it through your thick skull. You didn't see anything on the tube? No, I didn't, and neither did you. You've been faking it the whole time. Phyllis! I'll Phyllis you. It is the ruling of this court that Dr. Saltman's testimony be entered into evidence. He testified that, in his expert opinion, the accused was sane at the time of the crime, so the charge of murder won with special circumstances will stand. How can you stand there watching this? To what? You flapping your gums? That's not me! Who's not you? Joseph Britt, the jury has found you guilty. It is the judgment of this court that you be taken to the state prison where you'll be <sighs> put to death in the- Oh no! Turn it off! Off! The set's already off. Anything you see, it's in your mind, Joe. It must be your lousy conscience. Take a good look. Turn it off! What's the matter, Joe? There's nothing on Channel 10, is there? If you see something, go ahead. I don't mind. Why should I? I never meant anything to you anyway. We'll both watch it together. Why not? I need a good laugh. Get out of my way! Oh, I'm so frightened! You just scare me to death with your big muscles! Get out of the way, sir! My, my, how rough you are! Tell me what you see, Joe. It must be very upsetting. Towards my shepherd, I shall not want. No! I'm innocent, I tell you! That's what they all say. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. You ain't getting me in that room! Don't fight it, Joe. Lo, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. All I know is... I ain't sitting down! There's no use struggling. In all my years, I haven't seen a strap break yet. No! 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 There! Now let's see this TV work. No more Channel 10 or anything else! Was it Lady Wrestler's Joe or a burlesque show with fan dancers from Yonkers? <laughs> shut up! You shut up or I'll kill you! I swear I'll kill you! Come here. What do you see now, huh, Joe? What do you see? I'm on to you. You're nuts. We'll see about that. Ha! Missed me. I'll kill you. What's that? Say it again, Joe, so the neighbors will hear. I have witnesses. I said I'll kill you. Oh, no, you don't. Not my mother's face. Stand right there. Put it down, Joe. It's an antique. Yeah? An antique, huh? What's it going to be worth in a minute? You lousy, no good. Come to Papa. Get away from me. I got your point. 
No place to go now. I don't like that look in your eye. Unless it's out that window. Joe, put it down. Not the vase. Don't you try to run or I'll smash it, I swear. No! Get away from the window! Let go of me! You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can and will be used against you in a court of law. You can't afford an attorney. What happened? My wife and I were having an argument and then... Keep walking. Get in the squad car. You ain't gonna give us any trouble now, are you? That's him. That's the man. I saw him push her. They were fighting. Stand back, folks. All right, break it up. Break it up. Party's over. Excuse me, Mr. Britt. You. The repair man. You started the whole thing. Fix your set, okay? What did you do to my TV? It's your fault. Your fault. All right, move along. Oh, Mr. Britt. I can use you for a reference, can't I? You will recommend my services if anyone else should need their set repaired. Mr. Britt? Joe Britt, cab driver, also a two-bit Romeo and star of Channel 10, who made his television debut just in time for the new season. But the series was cut short. His final show was only a few months later, broadcast live from the prison at Osini, in the Twilight Zone. More from the Twilight Zone after this. Hello, I'm Stacy Keach. I hope you're enjoying this edition of the Twilight Zone Radio Dramas. To learn more about this series, be sure to log on to our official website at twilightzoneradio.com. You'll find special discounts on our Twilight Zone audio collections, listings of our radio stations, links to other websites, and a photo gallery of our recording studio and some of our stars in action. Plus ways to contact us with questions or comments about the show. And for a limited time, when you log on to TwilightZoneRadio.com, you can send in for a free CD of the show. So be sure to visit us at TwilightZoneRadio.com. Thank you for listening. Please like and subscribe.